tonight. Just let's keep it as a regular. Oh night. no, I don't play that. I, I welcome it, but you know, it's just one of those things. Nobody had it. Hey. I guess that was the only reason we didn't use it. It was kind of an unofficial truce. Yeah, basically. I got that. I got that. And uh, okay, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I, and this is something I'd like to even sort of violence Jack, is that. Uh, uh, you are a big guy. You're like six two. What? How much do you weigh? About three thirty. Three thirty six two. So you're you're about maybe three inches and in what uh, fifty pounds smaller than Bundy at his peak. You know, but yeah. still at the same time at the same time you're a big guy. You're a big guy like they used to have in wrestling a lot and on the mainstream of wrestling. Do you think there is a chance for a guy of your size anymore to get into any sort of mainstream of wrestling? Mm, I, probably not. Not looking like I do. Maybe if I shot you think, roids up or something, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, well, what, yeah, because what I'm thinking is, it's like because today, I'll tell you what, I mean, and I know that Violence Jack will obviously agree with me, if Bundy was around today, Vince probably would not give him a job, but Bundy would still probably run through 90% of his uh, roster. So I'm thinking the same thing with you. It's probably a sim very similar situation where you could probably run through a lot of that roster, but because of the look, they're not going to give you a shot. Same with TNA because of the TV, and same with the UFC, where even though Roy Nelson wins the Ultimate Fighter show, Dana White does nothing but run him down because of the way he looks. It doesn't have anything yeah. to do with the way he fights. It had to do with the way he looks. And I, I, and this is a question that we've been asking for weeks and weeks and weeks. Do you think it has to do with maybe the promoter liking the way a guy looks so much and they want to only see a certain type of guy, you know what I mean? They only want to – maybe Dana White's got a crush on a certain type of man – figure he doesn't care if a guy could actually fight or not he's got a crutch yeah. on the way a guy looks more than the way he could fight well i'm glad somebody said it before i had a chance to <laughs> oh no we've been saying it we've been saying it for weeks and weeks and weeks and we're asking seen. the question yeah because it's i mean obviously huh? if you if you look at if you look at the history of fighting you've got bam bam bigelow you got king king kong bundy you've got keem the african dream You've got uh, one Dick man the game. Bruiser, One Country Man Black Gang. Bro. You've got all these guys, and now, now because of TV, they only want a certain look of guy. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what. I guarantee you, and, and I'm not just saying this, Freak Show, just because you're on the show. I'm telling you that I know that Freak Show could beat up Cody Rhodes 100 times out of 100 times. There's not any doubt about it. But Cody Rhodes looks like an underwear model, and that's why he's on TV. Yeah, basically. That, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's not about talent or anything anymore. It's all about looks. I mean, could you imagine nowadays? You would never have. You would never see on WWF or TNA TV. You would never see Bam Bam Bigelow. Could you imagine that? Think about that's this. the so truth. Without Dusty Rhodes, you would never even have Cody Rhodes. So Cody Rhodes' own father would not even be allowed to excel in today's wrestling. No, oh no, 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 du no. Because let me tell you what, Dusty Rhodes was the bull of the woods, and he definitely would have kicked his own both of his sons' asses easy. He would have beat them both up easily. He would have he would have kicked the shit out of Randy Orton. He would have kicked the shit out of John Cena. He would have kicked. He, he wouldn't have beat Kurt Angle. I think Kurt Angle would probably would have beat him a hundred times out of a hundred times. But he would have put up a good match, and it would have at least been a sellable match on TV because Dusty Rhodes could talk. Cody Rhodes can't even talk. It's it's unbelievable. You never yeah. you never would have seen you never would have seen Tully Blanchard, Tommy Rich, Tully Anderson or, or T Tully Blanchard. You never would have seen Tully Blanchard's dad. You never would have seen Lou Says. None of those guys. You never would have seen any of those guys. Terry Funk would be lucky to be scratching the undercard on a show nowadays. At his at his best. At his best, he would have been lucky to, to scratch the undercard nowadays. 
And it's, that's it's just insane. And it's all because of the way the body looks. And it's the same in the UFC. There has to be on at some at some point on some level, there has to be somebody that comes up and says, "Look, man, we don't care how you look." Awesome. All right. Yeah, it'd be nice if there was somebody that would actually believe that. I guess a promoter that actually believed that. Go ahead, Are the promoters homosexual or are the fans homosexual today? Uh, good question. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you'd have to know if, if the promoters were because we've been asking that question. Uh, since the week before Thanksgiving, we had a show on the on the homosexual promoters, and it seems yeah. that the, the it, on the indie level, it's rife with homosexual promoters. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, I, you know, and funny these guys. Story. I got a funny story about that, actually. Uh, All right, oh, well, we want it. This is what we're wanting. A uh, little uh, little promotion that runs in Nashville, Tennessee, right across the interstate from where the Tennessee Titans play. And uh, I went up there, and uh, a friend of mine that works up there called me, and uh, he was wanting me, you know, to get some guys, you know, that had a pretty good look and everything, and some talent that could work and everything to, you know, maybe come up there and work because they were looking for some guys. And you know, he never even thought to ask me, you know, even though I got him booked, we got him booked, you know, at Mid South and CZW riding mine and Lane's coattails. But the thing is, uh, that's another story. But the thing is, he called me and wanted some guys, so I got him hooked up with this guy I know that hadn't been in the business but maybe a couple of years, but he's real good and got a good look and everything. So, you know, I went up there with him. He wanted me to go up there with him, so I went up there too, and, you know. I've been in the business 12 years, so I figured, you know, maybe this guy, you know, he might he might want to put me on the show or something too. I wasn't really looking to work, but I went in and uh, met the guy and talked to him and everything. And sure enough, the locker room was full of greasy baby doll-looking Barbie doll looking fucks, man, just from wall to wall. It was the, the whole show was packed with it. And they they wouldn't put me on. They just looked at me like I was the devil himself. <laughs> and I think that's it. I think that that is it, man. I think that there are a lot of guys promoting these shows now, and that's that's the whole reason they're in it now because they see this stuff on TV, and so the indie level has also become about body look and everything like that, and that's what these guys are after now. And there's a lot of guys with money that just want access to young dudes because uh, as uh, Hulk Hogan told told our guy Violence Jet personally about this whole situation with uh, Pat Patterson, we know. We know what's going on. And even if it is a rib, like they say, even if it's a rib that Pat Patterson and these guys were doing that, they're still, they still are probably getting 100 blowjobs a year from dudes that actually believe it. You know, Hulk Hogan didn't fall for it, but you you got to imagine there's a hundred other dipshits a year that want to get into the wrestling business that are going for it, you know? So if, so if Hogan fell for it, then uh, then I'm sure Patterson wouldn't have said no. Okay, no, it, well, no. Well, it's Hogan said he money. didn't. It's about, it's about the money they offer him, too, I'm sure, because uh, I've heard stories of that, too. I mean, how the... They give those guys a few extra dollars, pad their pocket, and hell, you know, no telling what the fuckers are do. <laughs> but okay, let's have let's hear let's hear it from you. What happened? Did you do this this thing with Ian Ryan's? Did you take Ian Ryan's eye out on purpose or no? Let, I mean, just so I want to get to this because this is the biggest controversial story from you, or that we know about you. And I'm sure there probably are more and more fucked up things. But this is the one that everyone, you know, the Internet talks about. You fucked up Ian Rotten, blah, 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 blah. And he won't book you anymore. Did you do that eye thing on purpose? Did you fuck his eye up, jab him and fucking jig that fucker out on purpose or what? Uh, Yeah, pretty much. Uh, That was was pretty much all I was thinking before the match. So I knew I had to do Mm -hmm. something. You want to go in and just... And straight up, just jack him up. Before, you yeah, know, you... It's, it's like a it's like a privilege, I guess, to be a young deathmatch wrestler on the scene and get a chance to get in the ring with Ian. I guess it was like a rite of passage, pretty much, for anybody that's going to make a name for themselves. And I figured I'm not just going to be another guy that gets in there and let you know get stabbed over and over and bleeds everywhere. So I figured, you know, why not take that opportunity and you know do something drastic. Well, I like this one, Ken, not in a gay way. 
Yeah, definitely not in the gay way. <laughs>